Everybody, guess what? We are live. I have Todd with us as our guest, and he is the owner of the Caverns. And we just got some new news that you guys are going to be open for Fourth of July for tours of the caves. Tell us about that. Sure. Uh, the Caverns, uh, we sort of say, is kind of Red Rocks meets Ruby Falls. And the Red Rocks portion of the Caverns we opened in the spring of 2018 uh, with the PBS taping and since we've done about 150 concerts. So we do 70, 75 concerts a year. And that's uh, been something very, very exciting to, to, to get 1,200 people underground in a magic cave, uh, for whether it's televised or whether it's, it's, it's non-televised. But there was, there was a hole, another hole in the ground uh, on the property. And it was a vertical uh, cave entrance that used to have to kind of spelunk down into. And it opened up into this amazing, amazing room that was historically known as Big Room Cave. It's one room that's three football fields long and wow. some of the most amazing formations. It's got, you know, your stalactites and stalagmites, but it's got columns and features. And so it's a very, in terms of cave geology, a super diverse uh, cave. And even behind that, um, there's another cave. You have to go through something called Tombstone Pass. And if you crawl and make your way through that, it opens up into something straight out of like the Goonies or something, underground rivers, underground waterfalls. And so we're gonna be doing two different types of tours. We're going to do a daily walking tour that folks starting July 4th can, can have the opportunity. Um, of course, we're in the COVID environment. So groups will be uh, limited to limited to uh, 10, 10 folks or less, and you'll have to stay in your groups, but the guides will wear masks and, you know, we'll be taking all the, the precautions along with uh, the, the C, uh, CDC and Tennessee guidelines and Tennessee tourism and all those kind of things. But it's really cool. I know there's a lot of folks that are uh, wanting to experience the caverns. Uh, we're not open for music. Uh, that's probably going to be a little while, but you can take a tour. And so the tour goes into the inaccessible part of the cave that nobody's ever seen before or, or few cavers have seen, but not the general public. And that, and then it also goes into um, the music venue. And so you get uh, uh, a whole new cave and then folks that have never seen the music venue, the tour uh, ends there inside the venue. So it's kind of two caves, uh, for the price of one, as it were. <laughs> there you go. So even though you, we can't enjoy the music right now, you still get to see the space yes. where those take place. You get to see the space and the whole new cave. And then the the, the second um, the second tour that we're offer is a is a adventure tour, which is a wild cave tour. And so folks can take advantage of coming, and uh, you have to schedule that in advance. But that's where you go through Tombstone Pass and like really get into. You're going to get dirty on that one. So the regular, the regular walking tour is about 45 minutes to an hour, you know, just wear sensible shoes. And, uh, uh, but it's hot this summer as every summer and caves are naturally air conditioning. So it's a great, it's a great thing to do, you know, call it a staycation or even a daycation, right? Uh, take some time, come down, come to a cool cave on a hot day and uh, get out. You know, it's one of the things that you can do to, to, to get outdoors, and, uh, uh, experience something that, that is so natural to Tennessee, but is, right. you know, has become sort of internationally uh, famous. So, you know, folks come to the shows from all over the country and even all over the world to see these magic music shows inside of a cave. And now uh, folks can, can come on a daily basis. So we're open Monday through Sunday, uh, 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. starting July 4th. Um, in fact, we will be the first show cave to open in the state of Tennessee in 75 years. So, wow. I didn't realize that. Yeah, it's it's kind of cool, you know, and uh, uh, so it's, 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 it's great. It's a wonderful. And part of the, the tour uh, is not only the geology of the caverns and also the music, but we also um, talk about and, and show uh, about the history of Grundy County, which is where uh, we're located. And so Grundy County has an amazing, amazing, uh, rich cultural history, uh, wonderful uh, hikes uh, up on the Cumberland Plateau. And we talk a whole lot about that. So uh, folks get more than just a cave tour. Uh, in fact, there was a, a, a very famous uh, 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 place called the Highlander Folk School that um, was the preeminent training ground for the civil rights movement. And Rosa Parks was trained there in civil disobedience. Dr. King was there. Uh, we Shall Overcome was written there. 
So we talk about that and we have some uh, cool kind of artifacts that we display in our, uh, our ticket office uh, and gift shop uh, that, that speaks to the, the really uh, wonderful and, and, and diverse culture of Grundy County. And so it's really cool. People get a great experience. Uh, we tie in the music and uh, 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 the cave and you can do the whole thing uh, in about an hour. You know, you mentioned that it's cool. It stays 59 degrees year round in the caves. I find that so amazing. It does. And it's funny, it's, it's, it's humid. So it's like 98% humidity. So it's, it's funny, the cave never changes, but the way you experience it does. So in the summertime, like right now, it feels like nature's air conditioning. In the wintertime, it feels like a warm and toasty cave because with the humidity, it really doesn't feel like it's 59. It kind of feels like where you're sitting or I'm sitting, like 72 with the AC shut on or something. So the only time it's really ever cold in the cave is when it's the same temperature inside as outside. So when it's in the fall or the spring, when it's in the 50s, sometimes I'll put a light jacket on. But in the wintertime, I'm wearing a T-shirt. And in the summertime, I'm wearing a T-shirt because it just feels great. Yeah. Tell me a little bit about, I know you said there's no music right now, but tell me about the little, the caverns and the music, how that came about. It's only been in, uh, open for a couple of years. Is that right? Yeah, correct. At the caverns it has been, but it actually, I started this um, in 2008. I had never been in a cave in my life and went to a cave in McMinnville called Cumberland Caverns and had the idea to do music in that cave. And I asked the tour guide there, I said, my God, this place is great. Y'all ever do live music down here? And she said, no, that'd be a good idea. So yada, yada, yada. Uh, I called it Bluegrass Underground and booked a band called the Steel Drivers. Who oh, the yeah. Their lead singer was a man named uh, Chris Stapleton. Chris Stapleton, yes. <laughs> the first show we ever did was with the Steel Drivers and a wonderful band, and they still are. And that was a radio show then. Uh, on WSM, it would air right before the Grand Ole Opry. Uh, a gentleman came to interview me for NPR and said, what is your you know, kind of real vision for this? And I said, well, I grew up loving PBS, Sesame Street, and Mr. Rogers, and all the Austin city limits. And um, I said, my vision for this would be to, to take it to PBS, kind of Austin city limits from a cave. And he said, well, um, I'm a producer for PBS. And I said, what was your name? again and he said Todd and that's my name so uh, I could remember that pretty easy Donna and uh, uh, so we started a production company called Todd Squared and so we're now we will be filming hopefully um, you know our, our uh, we were supposed to film it in, in March but we've rescheduled it to November our 10th season of Bluegrass Underground on television so we did it at the other cave for about eight years and three years ago I you know you don't get to say this every day but i I bought a cave. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, how does one go about buying a cave? That is so fascinating. It's a three beer story, Donna. <laughs> okay, well. <laughs> well, I'll tell you, I, I, I do have a line. I, I'll say that the, the gist of it is it involved a lot of gist. Uh, geologist, hydrologist, biologist, and archeologist. And, you know, buying the, 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 finding a cave that was in my mind suitable for doing the music and moving the venue um, was one thing, but we had to bring in geologists to make sure that it was structurally sound, right? Which we did. We had to bring in hydrologists because it's a living wet cave. You know, caves are made by water and time. So we had to really study the water patterns and do a lot of diligence on that. Um, a biologist, um, the, the big room salamander is the Tennessee state amphibian. And uh, we had to make sure that we weren't, you know, displacing that, that we were actually allowing it to thrive. And we had, so we had to consult biologists. And then the archeologists, um, we're in Cherokee country and the woodland Indians, uh, prehistoric and the Cherokee. And we of course wanted to make sure that we weren't disturbing any Indian burial grounds or anything like that. And we weren't, uh, they didn't bury their dead in, 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 in wet caves, you know, which was smart, but it is Cherokee country. And so we had to do a lot of diligence on that. In fact, um, when you come to the caverns, there's these big giant wooden magical doors and they have uh, a partnered with the Cherokee Nation. Many people might have heard of Sequoia, who was the uh, great Cherokee uh, Indian who came up with the uh, Sequoian alphabet, which is the only known in, you know, uh, instance in history of a hum one human being coming up with their entire language. So I partnered with the Cherokee Nation and it says in there what is kind of the fundamental belief of, of what we have at the caverns and at Bluegrass Underground. And it says uh, in, in Sequoia script, welcome to the caverns where the great spirit brings all people together through music. 
I love that. That's cool, isn't it? <laughs> yes, yeah. I love that. Well, you know, the caverns are a very special place and we know everyone's looking for things to do for 4th of July since most of the local yeah. events have been canceled. So we wanted to touch base with you and talk about that. Will there be any, before we let you go, will there be reservations you can make for those tours? Or and that's what we're doing, Donna. Um, uh, folks can go to thecaverns.com and, uh, and, and, and book uh, a, uh, you know, you just put in your day that you want to come and your time. We're leading tours every hour on the hour. So if a tour is sold out, it'll say so. And you can go look at the next time that we have one available. And we're going to be doing those for, you know, uh, for a long time. So, you know, when you're a caveman, you, you work in geologic time, not just human time. So this, this place ain't going, it, 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 it's been there a long time and it ain't going nowhere. But starting <laughs> July 4th, folks can come on and see us and we'll be happy uh, to take folks on an experience that I know uh, will mean something to them. I know the series you said mentioned has been uh, moved to November. I was looking at your website. There are a few other concerts that are listed. Have all those been rescheduled at this time? Well, what we're doing is doing that one there. Are, if you go online, you can see that we're showing shows, but we don't, we're just announcing them one by one when we reschedule. Okay. So okay. Uh, it's, it's, um, you know, the, the, the guidelines right now, are that you have to have six foot distance. So the shows that we have online have all sold out. So there's no way that we can do a show as a sellout and keep six feet because it would reduce our capacity by 50%. So we can't just like send an email and the money back to half the people and say, sorry, you didn't get to come. You know, yeah. we're just gonna, we're gonna, and plus if the finances don't work with the artists and all that. So we're rescheduling. Unfortunately, most things in this in our industry are pushing towards 2021, but that's the reality that we're in we know is live music we were sort of the first ones out of the pool and we'll be the last ones back in the pool you know us in sports and that's a reality but um we do have uh things that we can do and folks can come and safely uh tour the caverns and for folks that have been to the music show they're going to see something they've never seen before that's worth the 22 dollars admission fee and for folks that, that have never seen either while well, they're going to see both and we yeah. go into the backstory and uh, in fact, I'm going to be leading tours myself, our, our, our whole team. We haven't furloughed anybody. We haven't fired anybody. It's a small team of people. And we're going kind of from doing our normal day music stuff to giving cave tours. <laughs> so we're just, you know, you, you wear a lot of hats in this, in this world. And yeah. I'm looking very forward to uh, giving tours starting on July 4th. Matter of fact, I'll be giving the first one. All right. Hey, you guys, I hope you guys sign up for that. The Caverns, about 90 minutes from Nashville. Uh, go check them out. Thecaverns.com, right? That's right. Thecaverns.com. It's exit 127, the last exit on the Nashville side before you get to Mount Eagle Mountain. So it's beautiful Pelham, Tennessee, the Pelham Valley uh, in Grundy County. And uh, exit 127, people might be familiar. There's a Stuckey's there. So yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, come on and see us. We're just about eight minutes off the interstate and uh, love to uh, uh, see folks. And thanks so much. Uh, for the time today, Don. Yes, no problem. Thanks so much. Bye. See you guys. Bye.